Dr. Rivera serves on the Speaker's Bureau of both Alcon and Optometica, and Dr. Hoops has no financial interest. Welcome to our ASCRS film entitled Femto Laser Capsulotomy, the napkin versus the postage stamp. We hope you enjoy and learn something about the way in which femtosecond lasers can create on the one hand the napkin capsulotomy or on the other the postage stamp as we compare the two laser systems currently in use in our practice. You might wonder what our discussion has to do with a nice, straight, even-edged napkin and something quite different such as the serrated edges of a postage stamp. Yet in the process of performing femtosecond laser-assisted cataract surgery, with these two different platforms, we find that certain things occur. First of all, if this is your eye, your cornea, here's your iris and here's your lens. The goal is to be able to take a laser and apply light beams to the target tissue in an accurate and precise fashion. So if you have your laser here and your laser is going to be applying light beams to the lens and other light beams to the cornea, these light beams have to be focused very clearly and they especially need to be very accurately and precisely aimed at the anterior capsular structure and the substance within the cataractus lens itself. Here it is that we were able to notice a significant difference in the way these two lasers affect this tissue primarily. The Alcon Lens X was the first femtosecond cataract laser we obtained in our practice. It was in fact the first femtofaco unit that was cleared in the United States by the FDA. We were very excited to be able to join our colleagues performing femtofaco cataract surgery. However, in spite of the fact that this is very advanced technology, we found there were some issues that made our surgeries not go as smoothly as we anticipated. Yeah, there's quite a bit of adherent capsule right there. It's just basically tearing as I, as I open it. In its earliest versions, we observed that the Lens X often treated the anterior capsule inadequately and incompletely, creating something of a postage stamp effect that required careful manual completion and removal of the capsulotomy. If we have our lens inside the eye here, we want our laser to first of all create what lasers are supposed to do better, which is to create a capsulotomy. That laser has to treat this tissue precisely, here, 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 and here. And it has to make such a perfect circular capsulotomy that it leaves no untreated areas all the way across the anterior lens opening, so in the end, you have a perfectly formed capsulotomy like this. Once again, if the laser does it correctly, you will have, in fact, a round capsulotomy. But what happens if something distorts the laser here? Let's say, for example, that you have a cornea that now has folds in it. Now these folds are going to disrupt the laser as it's passing through that area, and who knows where that laser beam will eventually land. It may fire here or here. As another laser beam fires at this point, it may go in different directions. And so, in fact, you may end up with untreated areas of capsulotomy just like this, and the problem truly is in the way that the cornea is affected by the laser interface coming into contact with this structure here. In our earliest experience with the Lens X, we in fact found that there were many postage stamp type adhesions, hence the term postage stamp capsulotomy. These incomplete capsulotomies with tags, adhesions, or serrations create challenges of their own, particularly when a radial tear occurs, as seen in this video where hydrodissection causes the anterior capsule to tear, seen here in the subtle pop of these bubbles near the capsule. This can be frustrating for the surgeon, expecting femtolaser cataract surgery to make your cases go easier and not more difficult. While earlier versions of the Alcon Lens X utilized a hard docking mechanism with corneal applination and subsequent flattening with distortion of the cornea, with folds and ridges as previously shown, newer versions utilizing the soft fit interface are expected to decrease this distortion and have already been seen to improve the quality of the capsulotomy. Less corneal distortion simply means greater ability of the laser beam path to reach its intended target. Take a look at these video clips comparing the two procedures and I think you'll see what is meant by a napkin capsulotomy versus the postage stamp. Now on the other hand, if this is your cornea and your cornea remains pristine during femtosecond laser application, then the laser beam actually passes directly through without any deviation. 
Each of these laser beams will create the ultimate effect by treating the target tissue without deviation. But this structure right here has in fact got to remain pristine, for the minute you start introducing folds and ridges along this endothelial side, these laser beams will in fact once again be deviated from their intended path, so it's very important. Unfortunately, the hard docking and flattened interface flattens the cornea and induces these pesky multiple ridges as seen on OCT. This is actually the second laser system we acquired, the Optometica Catalyst. Rather than applinate the cornea, a liquid optic interface is used to couple the laser to the patient's eye, leaving the cornea untouched and therefore undistorted. We've observed complete circular free-floating capsulotomies are the norm with this system. The ease of lifting these capsulotomies in contrast to the postage stamp is similar to the ease of simply lifting a napkin off a table, hence the term napkin capsulotomy. If we were to use an anatomically correct interface that matches the corneal structure, this would eliminate the endothelial ridges, but an even better scenario is to place simply water and just have a water interface bathing the cornea. By doing this, you'll have a cornea which does in fact remain unaltered and gives us the pristine, unaltered corneal zone through which the laser beam can pass with precision. The Optometica Catalyst, being the second laser that we acquired, has in our experience been consistent in its ability to present us with free-floating napkin capsulotomies. The lack of corneal distortion using its liquid optic interface confirms on OCT an unaltered corneal path through which the laser can be expected to pass without deflection or impediment. Once again, if you see the visible part of the lens during surgery, you can see bubbles created where the laser is firing on the anterior capsule. However, if you show a big gap in this area, this will tend to be untreated capsule, and this will be the postage stamp adhesion with a weak spot in the capsular opening. Ideally, this should all be perfectly round without any skip lesions, such that as you lift the capsule out, this comes out completely free. The last thing you want is to have that capsulotomy look like this, with many areas creating a weak point. Your greatest fear is understandably to lose control and have your tear go peripheral, resulting in a radial tear, which of course can extend into the posterior capsule as well. The historical postage stamp capsulotomy of first generation femtosecond cataract lasers has indeed posed many challenges, while the napkin type of capsulotomy, such as that consistently fashioned by the Optometica Catalyst, is far preferable. We expect that all laser systems will continue to evolve and improve with the goal of consistently creating a napkin capsulotomy which makes your surgery a success.